All right, so we we traveled into our our magic hour time here, and I'm very happy to um, start off our service. And uh, I I'm uh, doing the duty of the prayer person, which I'm very happy to do. Very grateful for the power of prayer in our life. So grateful to place my hands on my heart. And I invite everyone to do the same, even if you're listening later. Mm, let's take a breath of love and gratitude together and anchor ourselves in the infinite intelligence, the pure wisdom, light, joy, harmony, peace, wisdom, creativity, wholeness, abundance, and prosperity the clarity of God. We are recognizing that all of these spiritual qualities are part of the kingdom that is within, and we are grateful to recognize these are the gifts that have already been given to us, and we are willing to make good use of them. So we come together to relinquish any attachments to the blocks to love, the blocks to wisdom, the blocks to clarity, we are grateful to open our hearts to the truth and to value the truth, letting go of the past. What I know is that our wonderful speaker and musician, Ted Swartz, is fully inspired, fully endowed, ignited with inspiration. And we are grateful to receive the inspiring music and words that Ted has to offer us, we open to receive it and we allow ourselves to truly be lifted and shifted permanently. We come together as a group in order to have a healing, a healing back to the root cause so we never experience that same distress again. And we offer this healing in sharing with the whole world because we are one with them. So we are grateful to receive and to share, knowing that everything we need is within us. We gratefully allow this healing to be, and so it is. Amen. 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 Yes, 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 yes. So it is my pleasure to introduce my very dear friend, Ted Swartz. And on his journey of 70 plus years, Ted has had an array of life-changing events, living in a blended family with Mary Ellen, his wife, and they have six adult children, 18 grandchildren, and one great-grand. Other life events include the loss of a previous wife and other close family members, bankruptcy and cancer. In addition, Ted has experienced amazing blessings as well. He's had a very successful business and he's been a songwriter for many years and an active part of the A Course in Miracles community. He finds songwriting to be a light out of the darker events of life and the celebration of his many blessings. I'm always grateful when Ted is here. And so it is my pleasure to introduce him. Ted is both our speaker and our musician today. So I'm gonna turn it over to Ted and we'll see what unfolds. Thanks for being here, Ted. And thank you, GJ, for being here too. Oh, Jennifer, thank you. This is a unique opportunity for me. Um, as Jennifer mentioned, I've been writing music for decades. <laughs> and no, uh, no band, you know, no, no desire to go out there and, and do uh, the big music thing. Uh, but I have used my music in bereavement uh, as part of, through the ministry, the grief group. Uh, with the men's group and also in, master, in my masterful living. Can you hold so, on one second, Ted? Um, is anybody having trouble hearing Ted? He's a little mm. soft. Yeah, oh, nobody else. Oh, let me move this. Let me move this 
in and turn this up just a little bit. Nancy, you might want to see if your speakers are turned all the way up there on your computer. Yeah. How's okay. that? Is that any better? Yes, it is, Ted. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, this is new for me. So uh, I'm not a big techie guy. Uh, I just take my little guitar and, and write my songs. And uh, like everyone else that's here, I recognize a lot of the names. Uh, I'm a sojourner, just like you. And by the grace of God, I found Jennifer and uh, the ministry here, which has been a blessing. So I am grateful and thankful for an opportunity to share some of my music with you and some of the things that brought that music to life. I use that music as an opportunity for me to take three or four minutes and take a part of my life, an episode that has taken place that rocked me on my heels. And if I can take and resolve it or find some peace or some path through the music, the music has done its job. My belief that it's a gift and that I am to share it um, because it might be helpful. And uh, I'm going to kick this off right now and just hit you with a song. Still breath wakes me from my pillow Body chills, hear the rain on the window. A deep breath, another beautiful day. A sharp pain, stand on my buckle. Massage life back into my knuckles. Off to the shower, another beautiful day. Happiness is a matter of decision as the day pulls your thoughts in all directions. Secret is focus your attention on what you're doing. It's the number one lesson. Bathroom steams, visions all hazy. Bar of soap smells like a daisy. A soft towel, another beautiful day. Yeah, a good life is a matter of decision as the day pulls your thoughts in all directions. Secret is focus your attention on what you're doing, it's the number one lesson. Grapefruit gives my face a new expression. Cereal box lends some education. Captain Crunch says it's another beautiful day. I'm supposed to whistle, but I'm smiling too much. <laughs> Yeah, it's another beautiful day. Yes, it's another beautiful day. <laughs> oh, oh that, great. Was, that was great. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, it's, uh, it's such a pleasure. Um, and the topic that I that I want to rest on and that the Spirit had brought to me was, you know, finding and building the happiness that we have that's offered to us. It's, it's part of the kingdom that's already instilled. Uh, but there are things that take place in our lives that rock us. And uh, Drusilla, I see she's here, hi. Uh, and Beth, last week, uh, one of the things that, that she brought up was, you know, the understanding that, uh, uh, and I think it was Joe Dispenza that, that she, she uh, mentioned, you know, that we, if we have things in our life that affect us and we carry it, be it a grievance, 
be in a grief. Uh, it changes our mood. And if it could be just a matter of, uh, you know, a day or two or just hours that a mood will change. If we carry it longer, it turns into an attitude. If it goes on for weeks or months, if it goes on past that, it changes our personality. And I have not met anyone that I haven't shared those type of life experiences that rock us, that hasn't caused us to, you know, go through those, through those phases. You know, our mood, attitude, or personality. And we all know someone that has. Me personally, I, I do have to say, I myself grew up trying to make my day as positive as I could. I come from a large family, we were very crowded, um, and I always tried to make it a happy, a happy thing, a happy place, and did all right. But sometimes in our lives, we make choices, choices that we wish we hadn't made, and then we have events that wish we hadn't had happened. And sometimes it becomes harder and harder to understand and maintain that life is good, we are loved, we are the beloved. Before I was introduced to the Course, and one of the life events that brought me to the course. Quick, you need to know the quick story. Married in high school. I got my driver's license in 69, got my marriage license in 70, and then my diploma uh, and a mortgage. I, of course, I was a, I was a very well-skilled mechanic and uh, I could afford it. And then also in 1970, had a son. So yeah, I kind of was brought into life kind of quick. And so was my wife at that time. Neither of us really, we grew up together and we are still best of friends, though uh, she needed freedom. She needed to find herself. And after married 17 years, uh, I had to let her go. I had known her for like 20 years, and we are still best of friends. Of course, we have two children together. And I love her husband. She is married now. But anyway, um, but I was crushed after that. And I had, to keep my, I had to keep myself going and for the kids, and for her, and for myself. And um, I did find, I found, a second wife and it was interesting um, it, at a, just a social dance and it, you can tell who she, I, if I told you who if you know who Judge Judy is that's my second that was my my wife she was a rock and um, and we dated for a couple years and got engaged. And it was a beautiful thing. We both lived in Michigan at the time. And she, uh, she said, yes, I proposed. So we were setting, making our plans and doing our thing. And she was, went to the doctor and was diagnosed with stage four cancer. Um, they said they could probably do a few things, uh, but there's not going to be a lot done. I still wanted to get married. I loved her like a rock. I still love her. I, and um, she said no. She said no. She sold. She would. She had her own place. She went, moved out of Michigan to Ohio, to Toledo. That's where her folks were. 
And um, I quit my job and just went to went to Toledo. I figured I can find work. And she didn't want to get married, but we did. She finally, I mean, I'm a charmer. I mean, she couldn't give up. I mean, I, I wouldn't give up. I loved her. And um, so for the next seven years, we were battling the cancer. Cancers, they just, it just kept moving, you know, from the breast, you know, to the brain, to, it was a mess. But I decided that no matter what, this was going to be the best years of her life. And uh, so I, uh, I'm going to give you another song real quick. And uh, this is the attitude that I had. Dark clouds fill my head Shroud the colors of my day When the painter's palette's all black and gray Sing this little song to color my day I sing green grass, red wine Big yellow sun, deep blue sky White sails and golden shores Put on rose-colored glasses and dream of more More green grass and red, red wine Big yellow sun, deep blue sky White sails and golden shores Color my world forevermore Working all day for nickels and dimes All the while trying to write my rhymes Too much black iron in cold gray steel I need colors I can't feel Like green grass and red, red wine Big yellow sun, deep blue sky White sails and golden shores Color my world forevermore Romance has always been a color of the night Shadows of lovers in pale moonlight But making love is life's brightest bouquet For lasting love, here's what you need Green grass, red wine Big yellow sun, deep blue sky White sails and golden shores Rose-colored glasses to dream of more More green grass and red, red wine Big yellow sun, deep blue sky White sails and golden shores Color my world Forevermore Thank you. So, the point, we all have this level. This level that we maintain, that we consider to be adequate for us to consider our, we're living a, a happy life. For me, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm on a border. If you, if you took it on a scale of one to 10, being contentment, you know, like one, two, three, and 
happiness four five six and fulfillment seven eight nine and joy ten you know i i i've had the events in my life that you know i'm i'm staying between contentment and and happiness um and my music has been able to help me do that and i think everybody it's some point in time have has had a particular song that registered in your life that um, you know helped lift that bass line and when I couldn't find it I wrote it for myself but I've met other people through my bereavement and grief work uh, that have done other things, arts and things like that. I, I know Kathleen's here, uh, you know, with her art and with, with the uh, uh, poetry and stuff that, you know, we, we find what we need to take that level and maybe increase it. You know, at that point is when I, at that point in time after Jan passed, um, I was steeped in bereavement. I wrote a number of bereavement songs and that allowed me to uh, do things at different churches and hospitals and hospices. And, um, and with that, I was able to take the music and in uh, in heal, and the music also helped heal others. I got to tell you this quick little story. That song I just sang is definitely not a bereavement song. Um, so here I am. I'm I'm at this this church. They invite me to come and speak to the bereaved spouses. So everyone in the room had either lost a husband or a wife. So I go in the other room. At that time, I didn't know what partnering up, you know, partnering up meant, but that's what I was doing. And it's like, okay, I got my guitar, I'm tuning it, and I'm sitting there, and I got all these great bereavement songs, and and the spirit says to me, "You got to sing that green green grass, red wine song." I'm going. Okay, you go get out of here. I can't sing that song. And uh, <laughs> I, I'm praying, and the person standing in the hallway going like this. <laughs> come here, come here. And I'm going, come on, spirit. You know, I, I can't sing that song. And and that's what came. Ted, you got to sing the green grass, red, red wine song. <laughs> I'm going. So I go into this room, and they're they're, all, they're at tables. And they're sitting around. And there's maybe two dozen people. I start singing that song, Green Grass, Red Wine, and when I hit that part, put on your rose-colored glasses and dream of more. This woman at the table right in front of me just melts. I mean, I finished the song, but I mean, when I say she melts, she needed to be consoled. I mean, so everything stopped. And she said that that's how she dealt with her husband that was when he was actively dying and in pain, which they were trying to keep under control. That's what they would, that was their code word, rose-colored glasses. And then she would take out picture books, travel things. They would talk about vacations they've taken and that, that's, that's how they got by. The important lesson for me was turning it over to spirit, not making my own decision. And when we talk about maintaining that baseline of happiness, that's what that's what the spirit's telling us. That's what the spirit was telling me is that you can't 
you can't think that it's going to be automatically going to another relationship automatically going um you know to a different type of job moving moving away uh, you know buying something um that that's not it it's you make the decision on what you want in your life you want to be happy you want to be fulfilled you want to take and progress but what is told to us like in lesson 189 it, one of my favorites in paragraph 7 talks about just be still forget everything and just be still and then paragraph 8 says I know my way to you better than you know your way to me. Chill out. I've got this. Well, that's, that's I'm paraphrasing. Um, but that's what the lesson tells us. So with all of the events that take place in our lives, you know, and, and that I can relate to in my life, all those things bring me to a choice. Do I think I can make myself happy or do I trust and know that happiness can be brought to me far greater if I just turn it over to the Spirit? So I, I, I know that this moves quick, I'm telling the stories, but I have to say at that point, after Jan was her name. Uh, I got involved with hospice, did a lot of things. That's how I was introduced with uh, to A Course of Miracles. And that set me on my, on my way. I did a four-year uh, study with uh, Richard Groves on, um, on life and death. It was all bereavement. And that's how I learned about Jennifer. And for years, I'd, I, would I would listen to her podcast. And it wasn't until I retired and COVID hit that I finally jumped on board. And that's how I met so many of you. So back on raising that level of happiness, in the course, it'll, it tells us, you know, we do it by first, we think of the day we want to have. We don't use our own judgment on how to decide to do it. Just know in your heart what it is that you want to feel, what you want to experience, and then release it to your higher self, your spirit, your sage, whatever you might use. That's the start. Chapter 30 is tells us the, the whole story on making the shift and making those decisions. And it's a good one to listen to, of course. If you search happiness in the course on the on the do it on the computer, you'll find, let's see, I wrote down here, three hundred and forty happy happiness pretty good gratitude gladness you know uh, see if I wrote it down here where I can see it mm, I don't see it but the biggie was forgiveness you know it's it's like a three-pronged thing you know love you know, of course, if we love and look for the highest and best, 1,598 hits. I, I, I did write that one down. So when we talk about forgiveness, the things that take us away from our happiness, if you ask yourself, you know, I can do so much to make myself happy um, by stuff, you know, you can do those things and follow the course, plan your day of happiness, release it, 
and follow what you're, what you're guided. But the biggie, the biggie, not only the gratitude like the green, green grass, be gladness, be glad, have it, is the forgiveness. And uh, time-wise, I want to do another, I want to do one more song. Uh, because forgiveness and grievance and vengeance are are the stoppers. We talked about changing, you know, what the mood is, what our attitude is, and if we carry that attitude long enough, it changes our personality. Forgiveness and grievance is the showstopper. The Course tells us that is the method for everything. Our wholeness, understanding the kingdom is fully installed, our happiness, our well-being, our abundance is because we have to release and know that in that forgiveness we, we end up in, as one. And that's how we can share and give and receive with full joy. Um, I have to say, you know, grievances and why things happen, the way they happened and when they happened, and then, you know, each of us do it, each of us have it. And there is in, uh, in one of the lessons, I think it's 196, where it talks about how uh, our thoughts and all of our thoughts of pleasure and happiness, we can gather them all together and then the wind blows them away. And we gather them all together and the wind blows them away. And uh, that was kind of the, this inspiration on, on grievance because it works the opposite of telling yourself it's a beautiful day because I found myself telling myself it, it's not. And I know that I had to forgive. So this is the song that I wrote that enabled me to see that I could understand the purpose of forgiveness. Um, and I hope, well, I'm just gonna sing it for you. One windy day I lay to rest at night I beckon sleep take its place My mind filled with old grievances And my sleep became its prey Though I thought it would pass Their savage chant replayed Tossed and turned then picked up my pen Words came out this way Unforgiveness is a hurricane Strong winds can uproot one's will Strength possessed in the light Is weakened by a chill Cry out to your higher self Show me the way Or risk your life to the wind Like leaves in a hurricane the floor until the morning sun gave birth to another day the grievances they begin to run as morning light melts them away 
sleep then took me to another world where peace lived among all men when i awoke i came to understand what the message was unforgiveness is a hurricane strong winds can uproot one's will strength possessed in the light is weakened by a chill cry out to your higher self show me the way or risk your life to the wind like leaves in a hurricane Leaves in a hurricane. Thank you. Oh, there's so much that I, I've been taught over the years and have written. And I, I just want to say thanks for giving me an opportunity to share that with you. And especially you, Jennifer, for allowing me to, you know, be part of the ministry with the grief group, with the men's group and the, and the Masterful Living. Um, I'm not a super tech guy. I don't have a whole bunch of recordings that I can offer or anything. Um, this is what you see is what you get. Um, so I can go, you know, I, 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 I am a musician. I, I am a songwriter. I, I could. I've got a hundred plus songs. I could keep you here for a while, but um, what do you say, Jennifer? Is this a good spot, or what do you want? Yes, yes. So grateful, Ted. Thank, oh, thank, you. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Hey, raise that, raise that baseline, raise it up. <laughs> All right. Well, this has just been a lovely. Uh, deep contemplation and a look into Ted's life here. Uh, I'm going to invite everybody to turn within and uh, and I'll ask you for, uh, can we get one more song at the end? Okay, great. Yeah, so let's place our hands on our hearts here and turn inward. Hmm. You know, one of the beautiful messages I hear in Ted's life is that his willingness to love and be loved, so strong, to truly love and be loved, so strong. And, you know, many, many of us, we, we get tricked into thinking that the big gift in life is when somebody loves us. But in my experience, the bigger gift is when somebody lets us love them. And when we can fully open our heart and love another human being with complete abandon, without conditions, without codependency, just loving and adoring someone, even a dog or a cat, my cat Sattva sitting on the floor beside me here. And the, the amount of trust that someone offers when they let us love them, it's deeply healing. I, I know absolutely that love is our healer because love is what we are. So when we are being loving, when we are 
in that place of giving and receiving love, then we are remembering who we are. We're remembering what our life is for. And that is deeply healing. It's nourishing to the soul. And sometimes in our relationships, we get fooled into thinking that it's a good idea to punish someone by withholding love. We don't quite realize that that's a bigger punishment for ourselves than it is for someone else. And when we withhold love, we cripple ourselves. We injure ourselves. And then the medicine for that is to forgive ourselves and to stop judging ourselves. And many times when we withhold love, we don't realize that we feel unworthy and guilty as a direct result of withholding love. Man, it took me a long, 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 long time to realize that all my withholding of love and punishing others was really injuring myself. I was the one that was getting hurt by my withholding love. We are designed to be the perfect givers and receivers of love. And when we take a position against love, or when we take a position that we think it's a good idea to punish someone, in whatever way, then we are injuring ourselves. And the, the fundamental injury we experience is we feel unworthy of love. And in lesson 68, um, Eight, which is my my favorite, my personal favorite lesson, love holds no grievances. It says that it is as sure that those who hold grievances will forget who they are, as it is certain that those who forgive will remember who they are. So this is our clear path to awakening. Being in that flow of giving and receiving love, even when it's difficult, even when it's hard, even when people don't want our love, we can love fully and completely, no matter what, no matter what, because Love is in the invisible. Sure, we can do many things to demonstrate our love, but we can love fully and completely, even if someone doesn't feel worthy of it. And our continuing to love and to see beyond circumstances can heal another person's heart, can open their heart to willingness. And we see it all the time. So let's forgive ourselves for any relationships we've had in the past where we were withholding love. And let's open our hearts and minds right now to love fully and completely and to extend love to all those that we've withheld it from. so that we may live as a beneficial presence, constructive, healing, bringing benefit to all. And let's take this energetic of giving and receiving love, remembering who we are, and let's share the benefits with everyone because we're one with them. We let the healing be, and so it is. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Right. So let's get ready to go into a breakout here so that everyone can have an opportunity to share and discuss uh, whatever's coming up for them. Maybe you're remembering somebody that you've been uh, withholding love from. Maybe you'd like to go the other way. You see the, the opportunity to go the other way, at least mentally even. And uh, let's, let's discuss it because I, I know when we can bring these things to the light of our conversation, it definitely is a healing experience. So let's get ready for our breakout here. And I'm going to open the rooms. Here we go. Recording here. There we go. All right. So, well, first of all, Ted, I just want to say the, the music sounds so beautiful today. Really, really oh, powerful, God. really great quality sound. Very, very glad for that. Thank you so much. Good. Yeah, I got a little box that kind of supposed to help. So, well, I think it's working. <laughs> hey, I'm curious, as you were preparing for your talk today and and going through the talk today, did you have any ahas? Because I always have ahas. And I was just yeah, I Absolutely. You know that uh, that second song about the green grass and red wine uh, just reminded me that I don't need to, I mean, I have pages of notes leading up to, to coming today. Uh, right. and, and when I was doing bereavement, uh, I took nothing. I took nothing but my guitar and... Uh, I would partner up before I would go into the meeting and and that's how that's that's just how it went. Right. Um so yeah, you know, from some pre earlier conversations we had, you know, I, I kept reducing, reducing my input of it and releasing more and more to spirit to say, just just let it be. Yeah. Um uh, it's been a challenge. It's been a challenge for me uh, with the music over the decades because I uh, I have no desires to like form a band or, you know, uh, I don't even have a lot of these songs aren't even recorded. And I'm, I'm just now getting to the point where they're all copywritten and stuff like this so that if anything should happen to me and anyone ever wants to sing the songs, the family has you know, some, some input, um, but it, it's not a, uh, I don't have no self goal of becoming something. Any insights about the topic, any ahas around the topic as you are preparing and speaking today? Well, I just know that the course tells us we're to be happy. We're meant to be happy. Yes. And in a lot of the things that I was discovering for myself in, in being a student of the course was that uh, it was challenging. And it was challenging because I had built in my own resistance. I had, you, you know, a non-acceptance to, you know, the idea that, you know, illusion and, uh, and of course, judgment, uh, judgment. I mean, we all do it. We all have it. We all judge, um, because of my, you know, I'm 70 years, 70 plus years old. Um, I've learned a few things over those, those decades, and it's hard to turn my trust over to a spirit. Mm -hmm. even though the spirit I've seen at work in my life you know one thing I didn't mention in the group was you know I I was blessed with the opportunity to be holding Jan in my arms when she took her last breath and it and it's amazing that um 
I was talking to her, telling her that somebody was, somebody will come for you. You know, you, you, you're not lost. We love you. It's, it's okay. Go home, you know, and, and, uh, and she was, she was pretty riddled with, with the cancer. I mean, she, but her eyes were still the eyes that I recognized. And she opened her eyes and looked at the foot of the bed. And I turned because I thought one of the kids had come into the room. And and I realized then she took her last breath that somebody did come. <laughs> somebody did come. Because <laughs> I know I could tell just by the way she looked that she saw somebody, you know. Uh, and it's hard to, I think, in preparing for this, I wanted to, to, you know, lay on the happiness because it, it, it wasn't all darkness. I mean, it, it, I miss her, yes. And it, but I have grown in faith. So she, she was sent to me to teach me, to get me to this point. It, it wasn't just... Yeah. It wasn't something that was given to me and taken away. It was something that I was blessed with. Yeah. And it blesses me still today. Yes. Yes. Of course it does. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love is eternal. We don't, you know, there's this myth that we fall in and out of love. But I say, if we think we're falling in and out of love, we don't understand what love is. Exactly. You know, we, we fall in and out of infatuation. We fall in and out of attraction, but not love. To no. me, love is permanent. Love is forever. Love is all. Yeah. And, and, and I think I mentioned, you know, my first wife is, she's a dear friend. I mean, I still see her. We have, children together and uh we were at a graduation for one of the grandchildren and it was just great and her husband is a great guy too he's great with the children so and this was the first time i had met him face to face and i i walk up to him he sticks out his hand and i push it away and reach it and give him this big big bear hug <laughs> and he's japanese you know he he's 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 like this and I squeeze him and I step back and I grab his shoulder and I says, you are such a great addition to this family. Uh, it was like so fun. So him and I, we, we, we really covered a lot of ground in our, our first face to face, but, uh, but it's true. The love, the love lasts. I mean, I, I see my first wife as, as a dear friend, uh, she is she's greater than a sister to me and um uh, because we both we, you know we were married so young we, we both kind of grew up together yes and, and she did find herself um she did she turned out to be a great great human being and when she could get rid of Phoenix, she was abused um she had a lot of baggage and uh I made up my mind I was going to take care of her to the end and of our relationship because she said she wanted her freedom. And I went bankrupt with paying doctors and psychologists and that there. I, I literally, I, we went through our divorce and I bankrupt. I was, I mean, I gave my last cent to see that she got everything she needed to get through. Right. And she turned out to be a great person and she's a blessing to me in my life. And our kids mm. no regrets then no regrets yeah that's an amazing thing there aren't a lot of people that would be willing to go bankrupt on behalf of another person that way but uh it's an investment yeah i didn't plan to go bankrupt i worked my ass off just couldn't pull it off just you know, it was recession, you know, in 84, yeah. went into a recession. I, it was hard to, I had a small business. It was just tough. Right. So. Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people are going to start coming out of the breakout here in just a moment. And uh, yep, love is the healer. Love is the teacher. Love, love, love. It's what it's all about. Teach only love because that's what we are. So true. If only children could be taught that being loving is their salvation. Yes. And that there's no competition in God. No. No. Yep. We got about 20 seconds left here and everybody's going to get booted out of the breakout rooms. And uh, so um, um, you've got another song in your back pocket for us there. And yeah, I, I, a couple ideas. Well, one, it's called Glory Days. I think it's going to be, it's a good one. Okay, great. More of the agape love. Okay. All right, here comes everybody. Yay. How was the breakout? Was it good? Yes. All right, excellent. If you have any ahas or insights or declarations intentions that you'd like to share you can put those into the chat uh, just make a couple of quick announcements here as most of you know these services are based we're able to put them on because of your donations that pay our staff to be able to work on all the different pieces of sundays with spirit the web pages the artwork the emails Etc. GJ is here working on a Sunday so that we can do Sundays with Spirit, and uh, for which I'm very grateful. So you can one of the easiest ways to uh, start making a, a contribution. You can make uh, a one-time co contribution or a recurring monthly contribution, or you can just sign up for free for our. Course in Miracles text messages. Uh, we send out inspirational text messages every day, quotes from the course. Uh, and you throw that option, again, it's free, but you can also set up a, a one-time or recurring donation if you like. We have wonderful things coming up. People are still joining Change Your Mind About Your Body, the five-month course that uh, goes all the way into the end of October. Uh, right now, we've got uh, some really great early bird specials going on. We have uh, Stop Playing Small Online Retreat in September's on early bird this month, as is the Finding Freedom from Fear Boot Camp, which is in October. That's also on early bird. And you can get an even better deal if you sign up for both on the early bird. So that those options are available. And um, I, I think that's all I've got right now for announcements. Ted, anything you'd like to announce? Um, Gratitude and thanks for an opportunity to come and share this music. Yeah, um, I'm working on it. I'll uh, have music that I would be able to share. It's like I say, it's not a, it's more of a sharing. I, I feel that I'm called to share it. So it's not like I'm, I'm not going to produce a CD or, or something like this and put it on shelves. So it, it'll be something that if it's made available, uh, it'll be something that, it'll, that Jennifer, you'll have and you'll be able to just, when people come to your classes and that there, you just give it to them. All right. I mean, if you like it. <laughs> <laughs> and I do. All right. Will you give us one more song, please, Ted? Yeah, in, in the whole bottom line, to get love, we give love. And uh, I decided I chose this song here um, because it is a matter. If it's in our own relationship, if it's someone on the street, it's somebody in our community, 
uh, you know, giving of ourself is it. It's it, not necessarily, you know, giving them a dollar. It, it's 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 more of giving of ourself is the greatest gift that we can give another. Uh, so, this is a song. It's called Glory Days. Got it. Hey, Ted, it sounds a little differently than it did before. We're not hearing. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. This should do it. Glory days. We're living in glory days. Give of yourself and you're on your way. Glory days. Glory days. We're living in glory days. Not yet to come. But here today, glory days. Help someone, give of yourself, stay till the job is done. Then quiet as a setting sun. Be on your way Fill the need In such a way no one else might see With respect and dignity Let love lead the way The reward you'll find will come from deep, deep inside. Inner peace, a grace-filled life, glory days. to come here today glory days glory days we're living in glory days give of yourself and you're on your way to glory Take all the time that you need to clear your mind from this breath back to the nursery rhymes. Yes, back to the words I am. To learn to laugh, we first must learn to cry to learn to live we must learn to die and for wisdom glorious wisdom we must pray glory day to come but here today glory days mm, glory days we're living 
long and glory days Give of yourself and you're on your way to glory days Glory days, yeah! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Well, what a blessing you are to us today, Ted. You're certainly a blessing to me every day. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for your gifts of love today. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. All right. I'm going to say a prayer and then we're on our way. We are grateful, we are thankful to join together mm. and to know that we've been blessed. We accept this blessing fully and completely and we go forward to magnify it, to multiply it and to share the benefits with everyone because we are one with them. We are grateful to allow the blessings that we have received to truly multiply and expand in our awareness we are grateful to receive the gifts of god today we are grateful that our holiness blesses the world we are grateful to let the past go we are grateful to stand in this new moment now awake aware and receptive we are truly sharing the benefits of our healing and our loving with everyone because we are one with them. We let the healing be, and so it is. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ted. Thanks, everybody. God bless you. See you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>